one thing that I've been getting requests for is a tutorial on how to use Gulfos. I'm going to show those of you who love Gulfos how to use it, or at least how I use it. Let's check out this beat I was working on the other night. I use some drums from Drums and Knock Volume 8, a splice hi-hat loop from Murder Beats, Omnisphere, 808 from Volume 8, and some sound design and different things. All right, so check it out. On the master, I get a bunch of shit, but we're gonna focus on Gulf Foss right now. So Gulf Foss is on this. This is what it sounds like without Gulf Foss. Ready? One. No Gulf Foss. With Gulf Foss. You can see it just kind of opens up the top end a little, tames some of that mid-range muddiness, and it just sounds punchy. I feel like Gulf Foss, they did something with pleasing frequency to the human ear and modeled the dynamic curve around that. So as you affect the parameters, it's getting closer to what sounds good to the human ear. What my typical setting is, is 20 on recover and around 20 or maybe a little more or less on tame. Normally I don't touch anything else. So let's set this back to zero. See, it's sounding kind of muddy right now. As I turn up recover, it's boosting frequencies. Let's set that back to zero. As I turn up tame, it seems to be boosting and cutting some frequencies. I'll show you guys what it sounds like when I go kind of extreme with it. It sounds really bad when you start to go extreme with it. But I find in small amounts, like 20, that's kind of the sweet spot for most of my tracks. Sound theory recommends that you kind of balance recover and tame. So that's why I do that. To my ears, that tends to work. So say I do that, but it's doing too much to the high end. You have these crossovers on either side. So as you bring this down, it's not going to affect those frequencies. So say we don't want to cut the bass too much. You can turn that up. And so wherever you drag that, it's not going to affect that area. So you can see it's only affecting this area, unless I do that. Another thing you can do is actually crisscross these. And so that way we're only affecting the top and the bass but we're not affecting anything in between. That's something you can play with and you can dial in the sound you want. If you find too much is happening to the top end, you can bring that down. Now, over here, you can see how much of the signal is being affected. On this side, it's volume. Over here at the bottom where my pointer is, this is frequency. So as we can see, the volume level is going down. And because the frequency is going to the right, it's getting brighter. If you play with the bias control, like for example, you can see it's going down in volume with this little arrow here. As we turn up bias, it's going to affect the volume less. So if I turn bias to 100, it's actually getting louder instead of quieter. If we mess with the brightness control, it's going to change the brightness. It's going to get darker if you put it at negative. And if you turn it up, it's going to get brighter. Personally, I don't even mess with those features. I don't feel like there's a need to with what I do. I just set recover and tame to around 20 and everything sounds better. That's basically how I use Gulfos. And it works. It's a great plugin. It's something I use on almost every master. I love it. What do you guys think of Gulfos?